The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 6th of June. We're looking at the Dow up 323, the S&P is up 59, the Q's are also up nicely, the Q's are up at 6. Let me show you a couple of things here. You've got the, the, the one minute E-mini, June E-mini, uh, pulls back to about the 4138 level. And then whoosh, in just from like 10 minutes to 10 Eastern time to what we, we're at 10.06 right now, has gone to the 41.68 level. That's really nice action. What it does is, let me show you something else. It, here we go. And this shows you um, the power of these different moving averages plus some FIB levels. Uh, most importantly, it went close to the 200 period moving average of, of the chugging around there at about 2 a.m. this morning. We went to a peak in the Chapman Wave methodology. You always expect a buy signal to be upgraded to a buy mode, uh, which implies that you will go to at least four higher peaks. Peak A, then the higher one is B, higher one is C, and then get to D. D is the fourth highest peak. Other things can happen there. It can go to E. Sometimes it goes to E within one bar and then fails. Or sometimes it goes to E within one or two bars and breaks out and starts a brand new buy mode. This one did both. It went to E and then it failed and then it came back down and it started a brand new buy mode. Went to another peak E just above it and it failed and it came down to the low of uh, 41, around about 37. And now, do you see this bar right here? The low bar cannot be the high bar except at a peak D. So that means you have to wait for the trough to be made. In other words, a higher low bar starts a new count. And now you can say this is a new leg A in the Chapman Wave methodology. At least that's the way it looks right now. We're calling it an A. And we'll see what happens over the rest of the day. All right, let's get back to our story. There's a lot to cover. Beginning of the week. It's actually one of the most important weeks for me because um, I'm showing IBM here, question in the den. IBM, can you look at IBM? Yep, I wanted to buy it for subscribers under 137 the other day. And then on Thursday, I said, you know what? I, I, I'm going to skip IBM right now because I can see it rounding, but I'm going to go with, uh, with one or two others in the single digits because they can give a bigger percentage. And we're trying to build up a kitty right now to be able to uh, at least uh, gone, uh, get, get some incremental money so that I can widen stops. This is a very important level because so many stocks are coming off major lows. So we chose a couple of very low priced one, one to just in the last uh, half hour has just jumped uh, 13%. Um, and uh, so I just went, went to that aspect. And it's also one that I kind of like the whole story <laughs> in this particular case. So what we're looking at here is IBM is in brand new leg B. This is fabulous action. I, over the weekend for my subscribers to my opening call, I always have a, a, a video. Uh, this one lasted about an hour. It could be uh, 45 minutes, could be an hour and 10 minutes. But I go through a lot of things, I go through patterns and different things. And I spoke about how IBM is coming back from the dead. It's like the... Like the old, like the Microsofts and the, uh, uh, the, the Adobe, all those stocks that were fantastic in 2000 and then just got smashed to the downside. Re, they, they reformed themselves. They, they morphed into a brand new entities and then took off and became leaders. And I think IBM is kind of starting to fit into that category. Had good earnings, the last earnings, IBM. Information and information technology, um, artificial intelligence, cloud enterprise, etc. Just a host of things that are very important. So it's up three and a quarter at 144.39. And I also mentioned Hewlett Packard, which I hadn't looked at for quite a while, almost at an all time high. Look at the monthly chart. And this is a spectacular move. And then there was one that was called, we don't, I don't have it right now, but it's, it fits the same thing. S A N M. Uh, we had a subscriber talk about it, and I mentioned it in my um, in that webinar. San San Mina, uh, this uh, sub assemblies for telecom systems, logistics solutions uh, for um, 
uh, medical, auto, defense, aerospace. I mean, they're in everything, right? And look at this beautiful cup formation, left side, right side, price, time match. And what does it do? It's breaking out a new all-time high at 45.57. So these are the, the and, and this is one that really got hammered over the years. Um, it was down in the in sing, very, very low single digits. Now it's at 45. So yes, we've got comeback kids all over the show. Let's maybe we need to do that. Let me just move out of there. Uh Okay, so within the context of what we're looking at here, uh, we're looking at the SMHs, which are finally uh, showing some signs of life, but not enough life to say they lead us. In fact, they're still lagging. There are 477 and 246. And one of the things I said to subscribers is that we're going to go for a very aggressive stance in one of the, one of the, one of the ETFs, one of the sectors. And the reason being, I can't choose the SMHs even though I love them, and I know we've had people, uh, we've had Brent uh, from California, had a lot of people talking about getting in, and they've had lovely moves on, say, the three times long SOXL, three times long the semiconductors, SMHs, and this is up 5.76% today, up $1.40 at 25.32. And then you've got ARC, which is the um, Kathy Woods ETF, has a whole bunch of stocks that if this market is really going to take off and have legs, those those stocks in that particular sector, um, the innovation to ETF, should do well. But trying to find them is really tough. Now, I, I'd like to get leadership. I believe very strongly that stocks that make new highs tend to stay on the new high list for quite a while. Stocks that make new lows tend to stay on the low list for a long time. So, yes, you could get IBM, but I'm looking for percentage kickers because I haven't yet <laughs> – I haven't got enough evidence to say that this is the move that's going to take us to all-time highs. This is the move that says we're slowly trying to rectify the ship, trying to get it upright, get it back on track. And therefore, it's a little more important to be very specific in the stocks that you want. And at the same time, you can be generic. And I'm generic right now. So that means I've got a sector that embraces all the different ones that I was speaking about a moment ago plus any isolated ones. Look, we've got Amazon finally did that split. It's up um, five, almost $6 today at 128.26. That is up 4.8%. This is after the split. Was it 20 to one, 20 for one split? Yep, I think so. Trading 128.20. Um, yes, this is nice. And it's saying there could be a whole new slew of investors coming into Amazon at this lower price. I know it doesn't make sense because you could buy Amazon and just buy 10 instead of 100. Um, this is the way it is. This is just human psychology. There's nothing you can do about it. Stochastics are 92%. That's fabulous. So you do have some leadership, at least for the moment. And that's the way I'm looking. Question came in. Hi, Basil. Uh, what are your top three indicators that you see that convinces you this move could have higher uh, probability of making a full leg D in the daily versus the previous failures? Um, I, I, look, uh, let's go to the Dow. And my, I, you know, I at any point I could have three, but I could have any three. I, I choose the three that are that particular moment. For instance, I spoke about for my subscribers, and on, on Friday I believe I also spoke about this. That there's a technique that I call the chap wave stalk leg formation. All right, we've got a break coming up. I won't walk right through the break and upset my engineer. I will just hold off right now and say the Dow's up 323 uh, points at 33,233. And we'll be back in a moment and I'll discuss the chap wave stalk leg formation, which could become one. Day. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Paolo Chapman, we're back. Uh, Dow's up 310. We're looking at the uh, Chapman Wave Stalknik schematic. This is the pattern. Have a very strong series of moves to the upside. It doesn't actually matter how many legs, but it, it's really a, a, a kind of a, I wouldn't say vertical, but it's a move that is consistently making higher highs and higher lows. Then all of a sudden it stalls and makes an oval pattern. That oval pattern says that you've got the stalk leg, the single leg. You know how a stalk stands on one leg, tucks the other leg underneath, and you've got this huge body. And you say, how the heck does this uh, manage to, the wind is blowing the, 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 um, uh, the wings and the uh, feathers are flapping away, and you've got the neck, and yet it's just standing quite still. And then what happens is you've got the neck, and when the neck turns around, it makes the beak. The beak, if it comes in and just touches the, the arch of the body itself and then goes higher, once the once you've concluded the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation with the leg, the oval body, the neck, which is usually not that long, and then comes back and retests the body. If it breaks just tight, barely into the top of the body and then starts up, you can have a very nice ruddy, and then you're on your own. But if it takes out the body low, that's very serious. After that's finished, you can still have a decent rally, but from much lower down. But this particular pattern has the potential to become a Chapman Wave propeller shaft formation where you've got a long leg, that's the blade, you've got the propeller right there, and then you've got the, the, the blade on the upside, and that can go one to one to the downside. That's kind of what happened here in a really big picture of Chapman Wave stalk leg formation back in 2015-16, and then it broke out in 2017. And the rule of thumb is that when it's done, it comes back sharply. It doesn't usually break the oval, if it's a propeller shaft, it doesn't break the oval high. Uh, if it does, it's just briefly. So this 18,351 high of May of 2015, look what happened, went all the way to P. Um, uh, this is uh, right there, it goes to an E, F, and then it has another buy mode that goes all the way to the high of 2020, February, at 20, what was that, 29,568. 
And what does it do? It plummets 39%. And where does it stop? 18,213. What was the high we were looking at? 18,351. So it nicked it, and that started the big move up. You remember, that was the day we went along. Um, 23rd of March, we went along um, the uh, diamonds. And now what we're looking at is uh, right here. Uh, no, so we went, through, went went along the calls, and then we added the dark. I can't remember right now. Uh, April the April the diamonds. Uh, April the third, right? We went along the calls, and then we held the calls for quite a while with great profits. But we added on, on the third uh, of April. We added the diamonds. We still have a core position there. And then what happened is we went to a peak E. At 36,952, we've had a pretty sharp pullback to the 30,635 level. And now what I'm saying is, undo that. There's a chance that this little, uh, this little formation, this cluster formation, it, it's really more like an oval. Uh, sorry, more like a circle than an oval. So we'll see if today or the next day, that's Tuesday, we break, oh, we've already gone to 33,235. We need to go to 33,273 to start leg B. If this is a B, we get both the Chapman Wave squash. I spoke about that last week, and I spoke about it in my, my overview uh, web, uh, uh, video for my subscribers. Oh, talking about uh, webinars, uh, Tom O'Brien does his, oh, what a day, oh, what a week to do it. Friday, Tom O'Brien does his webinar. This is Friday the 10th. And it should be, of course, just a wonderful webinar, all the all the different uh, aspects that it covers so thoroughly, and it should be just I mean, perfect timing for a webinar. What we're looking at is, in this particular pattern, the Chapman Wave squash says the stochastic ran from under 20% to over 20% really quickly, usually in a leg A, maybe just a, P, a leg B. And the MACD expanded with the uh, histogram way above the, uh, uh, the 0 percent line and expanding and it's the talk of the stochastic that gets you through peak a peak b and maybe even c and then you hand it over to the to the macd to continue the move to a d so we'll see what happens the day is young any any close in the, in this week underneath uh, 32500 says what are you talking about we are just stuck at this particular point we're looking uh, it, it looks good and we are long uh, we are along the diamonds. All right, got that out the way. I wanted to cover a couple of things as we were talking. Um, uh, let's see. Hi, Basil. I need help with, oh, so the three indicators that I talked. So normally I wouldn't be talking about the stalk leg formation because it doesn't happen that often. Normally I wouldn't be talking about the chat wave squash because it, 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 it doesn't happen that often. When it does happen, it could be really powerful. So all of a sudden, I'd, be li I'd like to be talking about the nine period over the 14. I'd like to talk about the MACD and all that. But I don't need to. The three things I'm looking at here is how strong is leg B? If if leg B doesn't become a peak B just moderately above 33,272 and then pulls back, I'd say, oh, okay, this is just this is one of those many buy signals, maybe even buy mode in the dailies, but it's doing nothing in the weekly chart because the weekly chart hasn't given the right signals yet. So the answer is, Everything's on track, but I can't say that it's there yet. Um, and Nick, I'll get to your question about the semiconductor, but first I want to go to the Tiger YouTube. Hi, Basil, I need help with EPAM. EPAM is E P A M. Trading at 340.38, up 8 at 242. Ah, very good question. This, oh, thank you for this because I want you to do something on this very aspect of the Chapman Wave methodology for, I would say, not weeks, but months. And every single time, as I'm busy doing my work, I get sidetracked and I don't get to it. So EPAM is uh, EPAM Systems, Inc. You know, I remember a long time ago reading all about it and now completely forgot. Let me just, just EPAM does it. EPAM stock. EPAM stock does what? Question. And it says... Oh, 20 years of industry leading experience, trusted by Fortune 500, full service. Uh, uh, give me, give me, give me, give me, what do you do? Huh? Huh? Um, a leading digital transformation services and product engineering company with host, a, will host an investor down there, just an investor day, a market watch, okay. 
All right, so they're in the software technology engineering digital content consulting area. So they had a spectacular move up into the 700s, had a little bit of a dip down to the one, um, I'd say the 190s, and trading right now at 340.41. So look at this. It gives you a sell signal with a long-legged doji, gap up, long-legged doji, must have been a news event over there on the 29th of March. 3.30, oh, ho, 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 nobody told me this. 330 round number high, round number high, and then it fails. And it fails, and it just makes a really bumpy arch formation down to the 260 level. I must check now that it makes round numbers. Is that a round number? Uh, ye at 260.68. And then it goes E A. B, B could be F slash B, but it, it pulls back and holds the bone with two sixties. And now what I want to talk about this look. It has a peak A, peak B, peak C, and it's just made a peak D underneath the previous high. I'll talk about that with you too. That's a chapter tiger tension out. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is one of the longest legs in a single move up in a monthly chart that I've seen for leg D. This went from EPAM, is EPAM Systems Inc., Digital Transformation Services and Project Engineering, uh, March 2020 low was 151.97, and it had a single leg A up, uh, sorry, leg D, all the way to the high that was made back in November, I think, yeah, November of 2021 at 725.40. Plummets down, goes almost to that left side low, and it goes to a low of um, right here, 190, oh, 168.59. Is that, no, that can't be right. Is that a six? Yeah, 168.59. 168 Unbelievable. 
gets taken out for 600 points of the downside. Woo. And now it's in the monthly chart A, B, but it's really more sideways than anything else. So the question is, within the context, look, this is a B. That obviously becomes a B minus, but it's still all in a buy mode because the MACD was very strong. Stochastic only briefly went above 80%, but it held that that held the low and became a uh, became a rectangle formation and the rectangle formation says if you start to make higher highs and higher lows you can go just under right on or just above the previous high of the flagpole that's the flagpole in this case is 360 364.65 on the 5th of um, 5th of May and here we are on the 6th of June 6655 goes to 66 and we've already made a peak D uh, quite a bit underneath that previous high. This high was only uh, 349.44. Uh, now the question is, um, uh, I need help. Did it make a peak D or is it a gray? So the, the real question is, do I, do I keep holding this? And my answer is it's doing well within the context of this market. It isn't great, but just in, you know, on a daily basis, it's done quite well. On a weekly basis, it's making a stair step move, but it's not breaking down. It would have been great if last week it went to leg D and leg D went just to the, about the 359, 360 level. That would have been really important because what it would have done is got the MACD, which is turned up, but it hasn't crossed positive. It's still pink. It would have got it to a, a almost a crossover. And then I would have said, hey, this is looking really good because now you've got a weekly re a rectangle formation to combine with the uh, the, the uh, daily, but the weekly says if the the because you've gone above the high that was made the week of the fourth of March, you went to three fifty five seventy six. Now I would automatically raise the rectangle to that level right there. So you've got a much larger one. So yes, the yes the, the the real question is, you're long. Should you stay long? The real question for me is, if I'm looking at it for the very first time, I don't like peak Ds underneath the previous high unless the technicals are holding really well. Well, the, the MACD is not great, but it's good. The stochastic's not great, but it's at 82% and flat. The on-balance volumes analysis, the, the um, relative strength, the little gray line there, is good in the daily chart. The 9's way above the 14. I'm going to suggest you hold it, but I am going to suggest something because at a peak D under the previous high, it's going to really require a tremendous amount of energy to pierce that high, not just to go, to pierce the high of the 5th of May at 364.65. Well, that's 20-something points above. You wouldn't mind that. I'm just going to say I'd hold tight. What I would do is one small position. Today's low is 336, round number low. If in the next two days or next three days it takes that out, take a little bit off. And then let's look at it together. I don't want you getting out of something that's showing such tremendous strength since it made a low. Uh, that was March of this year. It hasn't it's shown strength in the price movement of 168 going to the 360 360s. Uh, that is that's a double. Right, just about. So what I'm looking at here is it shows that, that kind of percentage gain. It looks horrible if you're looking at the chart. So let's go and say, what are you doing for me now? It's doing very nicely for you. I wouldn't want you to get out of anything but a small position if it takes out today's low of 336. You say, say to yourself, wait a minute, that's five points. I don't really want to give up five points and then say, uh oh, it's not good. So if that's the case, and if you're really, really a little bit nervous, take off right now at 341.80 because if it moves up from here, what you've done is you um, you are still in the, in the in a really good long position. I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to tell the stock what to do. I'm just saying it's acted well. It's in a rectangle formation. No, it didn't go to the previous left side high in the rectangle. It's also a cup formation, but it is making higher highs and higher lows. And when it takes a bit of a breather, uh, this is nothing. It's an inside bar con considering Thursday's big green candle. So all I'm saying is, if anything, take a little bit of I would try to keep the core position because as long as this market tries to move higher, you can see this wants to go higher. That's all you need. 
And then we'll look at the weekly chart maybe uh, towards Thursday or so. Okay, I ho hope that helps. A question here is um, SMHs. I did the SMHs, but I'm going to do them again. And they did them in a different context. Look, the SMHs, this is different. Look, this is the rectangle formation with a cup formation. And it, it's really struggling. It's, it's actually sad to see the semiconductor index, which for years has been a leader on the way up and a leader on the way down, struggling like this. I'm drawing in the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. And I'm going to say for this week, I have a target of about two, it's a 246, of about 251. And it should occur by, what's the date today? The 6th. It should occur by about Thursday or Friday. If it starts to fail, then I'm going to say be careful with the SMHs. They're still lagging. Um, now, the question is, would you mind, is it leg C? No, it's a peak C. Yes, you're right. It's a peak C. And what I'm looking at is the 9 period is way above the 14. That's fabulous. The MACD is really strong. That's good. Stochastic's flat at 88%. And what I am saying to you is that I am anticipating there should be a leg D. And then we have to reassess because it's really a small one. Nice percentage going from uh, 215.23 uh, on the 12th of May to the high of uh, the 2nd. 249.12, it's a 55-point gain. Um, hey, that's really good. It was a 20% gain just in, you know, from a low. But this is something that was a 318, double top 318 in January. So, yes, I do like the semis, but only I like them only because they're running. But I, I've avoided them for now because I think choosing what we've chosen as an aggressive long that covers that sector is better. But your question was the SMHs. Look at the way it struggled at the nine period, the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart. That's the black line there. It's gone to a leg A, still a leg A until Friday's close. Because if it doesn't make a higher high uh, above that, what does it say, 249 area? Um, that's just going to be a problem. But I think I think it has a chance to do that. But the monthly chart says a lot of work needs to be done in the semis. I hope that answers your question. But the only thing I want to say is a close this week below 236, 238 is the 14 period moving average. Not only fills, starts to fill that gap, but it's very negative. And that would be almost like the oval pattern. In fact, I'm going to put this in. It's almost like a stalk leg formation. Look, yeah, it looks. it doesn't look like a rectangle. It looks like an oval. And as such, I'm going to put that in. You might have the stalk leg here as well, which says it could go to a leg D, and then you've got to be careful because of key support that if it takes out the low that was made on the 1st of June of 237.61, uh, the SMHs have a bit of a problem. I'll be back, and we'll go to Millie's question as soon as I return. Uh, go with ERF. I will. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, so let's go back to Mimi's question was ERF. ERF is, uh, let's, I typed in the wrong place. <laughs> ERF, here we go. ERF, leg D, huge leg D, up 56 cents at 1660, uh, up 3.49% today alone. Uh, this is a GSAS C in the weekly chart, leg E, Enter Plus Corporation Oil and Gas Assets. So maybe if you remember, we were down here at the 15 ish, 1558, I think, level. And I said I would recommend that you start a little nibble on the position right now. If it takes out the high of either that day or the day before, I would add the trading position and try to keep the other as a core. So now here it is at 16.63, up uh, about 10, 12 percent from where we discussed it. Uh, leg E, the on-balance volumes becoming very, very overbought. But the MACD is very strong. The stochastics at 93.46. I love 93.46. So what I'm going to say to you is, if you are still in it, just be prepared that the on-balance volume suggesting that there could be a dip. It doesn't say major leg D goes to peak D, massive smash to the downside, going back to the nine period moving average of 15.13, then 14.59 at the 40. What it says is you could, could get some sideways action as this uh, somewhat overbought level in the unbalanced volume uh, tends to see some filtering of that upside momentum as it just it needs to just digest those gains. So that's what I'm suggesting. I like it. I, I believe you should be in it because we've spoken about it a few times. And all I'm saying is that if you have a question now because you're saying, oh, wow, just look, oh, man, look at this is a vertical move. It's had like one one peak since it was down the 12s. Uh, there was peak C for a day and then it, make, it made a new recovery high. I'm just suggesting to you, Lake E in the monthly chart, this is, this is in the area of greatest import at this particular point. I wouldn't want you to do anything thinking of shorting or thinking of getting out. But I will say to you, because you asked the question, I'm going to say take a little bit off, reward yourself. You know, the, I always mention this. There are players in the business at this particular point in leg D with everything just looking unbelievably great, but getting a little toppy would say, I am going to double my position. I mean, I got a pyramid and it goes up. It doesn't go down where I lighten up. I add, if I'm in a winning position, and those are the people that either just get wiped out or they make a fortune. But this is not the business we're in. We're in the business of staying in business. It is really tough. I couldn't tell you. I, I just know out of our hundreds of people that have signed up for, um, uh, for Discord, over the last month or so, two, whatever it is, two months, um, I, I just know that there are people out there that have just had exactly that happen to them. They got they got smacked, got almost wiped out, and it took it was really hard to get back. And many of them are here because they got back. Bravo! I mean, it takes a lot of effort. 
I don't want you to even experience that. So I'm saying this is where I would start, just like I said to uh, Joe Malai, who talked about um, um, EPAM. I, you want to stay in the business. I, I'd rather sacrifice a certain percentage to the upside by knowing I'm still in business and just say, oh, oh coulda, woulda, shoulda. Uh, because you, the, the whole idea is to be, it's long term. I, that's why I don't try to do those positions for the screamers where I said, let's get a big, huge position and we can take our 6 or 8 or 12% per in, in a day and woohoo, uh, you've made your fortune. No, it's just one part. The smaller the, smaller the number of the entry point, if it's a $7 stock, the less I say you want to be committed. It might be a very nice percentage, but you're not going to put 80% of your money in it. That's the way I look at it. So um, ERF, very strong. The 120 minute chart, oh, I'm going to do this. I haven't done it in a little one. It's fun and I always forget about it. So this is brand new A, B, C, D. Yeah, it could be an E in the 120 minute chart. Let's go to the uh, Chapman Wave automated support and resistance lines. Let's go to ERF, ERF. There you are. And what do we have? Nothing. Nothing in the daily. We have 6.69 in the 16.69 uh, in the in the 10 minute chart. We're already at 1664. Uh, we, we've got 1634 in the 120 minute chart. We're above that. Nothing in the in the monthly and the weekly has 1604, and we're above that. So you can see this is a pal. This is in the, in the sweet spot. And all I'm saying is, money management says maybe take a little bit off, reward yourself. And you could always think of me putting it back maybe a Thursday, Friday, we look at it again. And it's had a bit of a dip, maybe that's the opportunity. Next question is, Tiger TV question, Mark. I am in Enbridge, ENV. These are all great. We've got all these uh, oil service uh, sectors. This is Enbridge. Let me just jump to uh, ENB, ENB. I don't think I've got this notated. Oh, I did. I, I know that I did this sometime. There it is. A peak D in the weekly chart makes a V-shaped formation, getting back to that left side high. Peak A, peak B, peak C, leg D. And again, like the energy, a lot of the energies are in this D. The previous high was at peak E right there on the 5th of April at 47.42. Is at 47.19 today, having gone to 47.23. How many times have we seen these stocks go back within pennies of their previous high and then take a breather? So what's your question? I'm in Enbridge, ENB, and would like your analysis of the stock in order to evaluate my decision making. From my limited knowledge, I see it looks good on a monthly chart, but your input would be much appreciated. Thanks in advance. Sharky. Okay. So let's do this. Uh, oh, another Sharky, huh? <laughs> All right. We're looking at this weekly chart at a peak D, makes a V-shaped pattern. Look, here's the V-shaped pattern. Now, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to say, if I want to measure... You know how Tom O'Brien looks at volume and he likes to look at the vertical aspect. What was it doing at this particular point and what is it doing here, which he's going to talk about in great, I can imagine it's huge detail on Friday when he does his webinar. Well, I like to do the same. I use on-balance volume, a slightly different concept. It's just a running total of um, if the price is up on the, on the bar at the close, you add it to a running total. If it's down, you subtract it. I love that because I, I started off in the business I wasn't in the business. I was an amateur uh, uh, with um, uh, with uh, why am I Joe Grenville's uh, on balance volume, and I used to have to add it up myself. It was just horrible uh, with the calculator and all. And then it became an on balance volume running total. There's the blue line in the daily. There's the blue line in the weekly. And look what it says. It says that the MACD is good, but it's not as good as it was at the high that was made at uh, 47.42, the week of the 8th of April. The, the, uh, the stochastic was really strong. The unbalanced, unbalanced volume was strong. And now look at it. The uh, MACD is good, but not great. And the stochastic is only at 75%, but the unbalanced volume is good. It is getting a little overbought. So let me. Uh, this is the same thing. That with Mimi, I, I don't want to get you out of the most fantastic position when you're in it and it's doing well and it's been a leader in the field. So this is what I'm going to suggest. This is peak A, that's peak B, this is peak C, and this is leg D. Buy mode uh, completion in the sense that you fulfilled the ob obligation of getting to at least, remember at least, a leg D 
going to a potential peak D. And that's what we're looking at. And the weekly chart went to a peak D and pulled back sharply. Monthly chart is an A, B, C, D, E. And it could go to an F. It goes one penny above the left side high. So what it do? Um, I'm going to take my time for a segment to go. I'm probably going to say pretty much the same thing that I said to Mimi. I'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So the reason why during the break I was doing so much work on the one-minute chart of the E-mini was to show you the um, vertical test that the E-mini went to at 10.07 this morning, 4168.25, and then went into the rectangle formation. Remember, rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. But at the same time, I love to draw it as a bowl formation because there's always a good chance that it's going to retest the high. Well, it did. It went to um, at 10.53. That's uh, almost 45 minutes later. It went to 167, 4167.25. And look, the MACD is much weaker, and the stochastic went from 83% uh, down to where it is right now, 53%. Uh, so that's saying you're looking at weakness. The reason why I'm bringing this up is, look, uh, we're, we've got uh, Sharky, we've got, uh, I've got LNG, just the question that Dan came up during the break. LNG is just stuck for the moment, made a 150 round number a high uh, recently. We'll do that tomorrow. I don't think it's going anywhere right now. But the question is Enbridge, ENB. Well, ENB, look at this. 
the weekly chart, both on the uh, the daily and the weekly, had that double top formation. And the technicals here on the daily are actually quite good, but the weekly chart says, uh-uh, not quite so good. So, and it's in leg D. So what I'm going to say to you is, it's a little different to, to the other stock that we're looking at, ERF. I think in this particular case, I'm going to say to you, rather than take a little bit off here at 47.24, it's up 43 cents, why not raise, raise the stop on just a small position to about 46.90, just under, no, 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 no make it 40, 46, 46.30. Just 40, around about 46.30, just for the next day or so. And let's just see where it goes because it's acting very well. Maybe tomorrow I'll say something like take a little bit off. But at this particular point, give it a little bit of room to see if it actually tackles the previous high. So we're wrapping it up. Yeah, I'm going to hand you over to Larry Pazaventa. Great programming all, all day. Stay tuned. Check out both the call date. The newsletter, Bowser Chapman signing off. Do the news and then I'm out. But um, the day is young. Remember, we're